I'm Owen, a member of DS21 at the Data School. In this video, I'm going to show you how to make a spark line with a colored dot indicator that will tell you if sales have gone up or down from the previous value. By the end of this video, you will know how to create a chart like this, where there is a dot at the end of the line which indicates that from the previous value, sales have decreased. To begin this tutorial, let's build out the view that we first want to find. From the data pane, right click and drag order date to the columns and select continuous months. Next, from the data pane, drag sales onto rows. And this is the chart that we'll be using and we'll be applying the dotted indicator to. To start, we're going to need to make a few calculated fields. So from the data pane, click the drop down and create a calculated field. The first calculation we need is to be able to find the current month. And to do this, we need to open a mustachio and we need to find the maximum of the date trunk at the monthly level of the order date. And what this is going to return is it's going to return December 2020, which is the most recent month of all of the months in the data set. The next step is to create a similar calculation, but this time we want to find the previous month relative to the current month. So we're going to call this calculation previous month, and we're going to use the day add function to achieve this. We want to look at the monthly level. We want to subtract one from the value that we're using, and the value that we're going to be using is the current month. And what this is going to do is it's going to return November 2020. Now that we have our current and previous month calculations, we need to return sales for both of these values. To start, we need to make another calculated field, which is going to be called current month sales. And what we're going to do here is we're going to say that if the date trunk at a monthly level of order date is equal to our current month, then return sales. Instead of having to write this calculation twice, we can simply duplicate this value, this field here, and that's going to give us a copy. And we can just right click and edit this. And we can now rename this to previous month sales. And instead, what we want to do here is we just want to swap out current month for previous month, which can be found below the returns if you're using the most up-to-date version of Superstore. So what this is going to do is it's going to say that if the month that we're at is equal to the previous month from the most current, then return sales. If we click OK, we now have the calculations we need to set up this view other than just one. First thing we're going to do, though, is we're going to drag our current month sales onto our rows and that's just going to give us 47 nulls and a dot. And that dot is at December 2020, as we can see here, both with the same value. In order to get this in one view, we need to go onto the row shelf and right click that current month calculation. And we need to make that a dual axis. And what that's going to do is it's going to merge these into one, but it's going to look a little bit weird. The reason why is we haven't synchronized our axis. We also have measure names on colors. So to remedy this, if we right click on the axis on the right hand side and we synchronize our axis, we can see that the dot is now aligned to our sum of sales. The next thing that we need to do is we need to just on our marks card, select all and drag me measure names off. The final thing we need to do is we need to find a way to indicate whether our current month sales is less or more than our previous month sales. So to do that, we need one more calculated field. From the data pane, if we click the drop down and create a calculated field, we want to call this current versus previous month sales. And here we need to use another level of detail expression. So if we open a mustachio, we want to see if the sum of our current month sales is greater than the sum of our previous month sales. If this returns a true, 
then it means that our current month sales are bigger than previous month. And if it doesn't, then it means that the current month sales are smaller. If we take a look here, we can see that we want this to indicate a false as the November sales here are greater than the December sales here. So if we click OK, we'll now have a true or false that we just need to drag onto the color shelf on our current month sales. So on the marks card, if we select current month sales, we now just need to drag this from the data pane onto color. And as you can see here, it's indicating false, meaning that our calculation was right and we have now achieved this view. The only thing we need to do now is we just need to edit this and maybe make this color red instead of being blue. So if we double click on our legend and we select false and we change that color to red and click apply, other than a bit of formatting, we've created this chart. So the first thing we may want to do is to get rid of the axis on either side. And to do that in one step, all we need to do is go over to the left axis, right click and untick show header. Finally, we may want to get rid of the x-axis indicating our months. And the same applies here. All we need to do is go onto this axis, right click and untick show header. We may also want to make this dot a little bit bigger. So all that we need to do here is to click on the sum of current set month sales. Firstly, we need to make sure that it's changed to a dot as this is what we're trying to achieve. And as you can see, the dot is now a little bit bigger and easier to see. Finally, we may want to remove any of the grid lines that are currently on the spark line. So if we right click on the view and select format, we now have the option to format any of the lines, which is the final one along the toolbar. But as you can see, it says that there are currently no grid lines on, and that's not the case. So to quickly remedy this, all we need to do is just click this drop down, add our grid lines back on, and that's going to add both row and column grid lines, and then just reselect none. And now we have our final product. I hope you found this tutorial useful. For a similar video, check out one of my previous tutorials, which shows you how to achieve a similar thing, but across all months using table calculations. Remember to subscribe to stay up to date with the latest content on this channel.